Hey, welcome to another episode of Making Sales Social Live. Today, we're continuing our conversation about social listening and actually LinkedIn listening. Welcome to Making Sales Social Live, as we share LinkedIn and social selling training, strategies, and tips that will have an immediate impact on your business. Join Bill McCormick, Bryn Tillman, and me, Bob Woods, every week making sales social live who knew that you could go to linkedin for more things than just reading reading the uh the uh, news feed just to see what's going on or just to take a 10 minute break at work or whatever yeah no this is really purposefully using linkedin to socially listen and understand what uh, our prospects and our network are, are care about and this is important because what we want to do is, is, you know, we've always been told, know what you want to say and what you want to say to people. Mm -hmm. and, and in this idea, what we want to do is listen so we know that we're saying the right thing. And that as we're reaching out, as we're creating content, as we're making sure we resonate with people, we're not talking about what we want to talk about, but we're talking about what it is our prospects and our clients want to hear. So you're adding value. Absolutely. And so here, here's the interesting thing. And I just kind of want to kind of reframe what you just said. As salespeople or people in a business development role, we tend to want to talk about our products and services, the solutions we provide. And even if we think it's educational, like in our mind, we think, well, I'm educating them. It's typically only content that you care about or potentially your competitors. The content that our buyers care about is very different. And there are all kinds of different ways to identify what it is that matters to them. And we're going to talk about a few things that you can do on LinkedIn today to better socially listen. And hi, Sandy. Welcome. Hey, Phil. It's Hi, great. Bill. Great to have you here. You know, what we say all the time is don't lead with your solution. And, and, and that's what we tend to do even in our in our content, like you said, Bryn. And what ends up happening, what I always say is that we end up sounding like the adults in a Charlie Brown cartoon when we lead with our solution. I want, 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 because everybody's doing it, it's just white noise. So what we want to do is we want to lead with value and we want to lead with insights. And the way that we do that is find out what matters to our prospects? What matters to our clients? So, um, so let's talk about some of the places and ways on LinkedIn where we can listen with our eyes, where we can socially listen to find out what's important to our prospects and our clients. So let, let's start with the company page, the company page of our prospects. That's a good place to start, right? There are a few things that I look at first. The, for me, I actually read the about the company because this is how the company describes them and what they do for their clients. So getting the perspective of how they see themselves is a great way to start with what matters to them. Another thing, obviously, is what's the content they're sharing? What are the hashtags that they're using to engage um, what are some other things that you do that you well, look at? Well, I'll go to just the content for a moment is, is if you do a deep dive in that is 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 who who's engaging in that content? Mm -hmm. are, are there people who are their end users that are engaging or mm -hmm. other companies? So so that's good. But also, what are the problems and solutions that they're trying to solve with that content? So how are they trying to educate their end user? Because that mm -hmm. they care about. So with that particular prospect for that particular company, we can find content that might resonate with the decision makers we deal with if we find more content than answers those questions. I love that. Bob, anything you want to add to company pages? <laughs> As Bill was going through everything, I was like, yeah, I was going to say that. Uh, definitely have that covered, at least from, from, from my viewpoint. Yeah. So then let's just dive a little deeper into the hashtag piece, right? Yeah. So if they're using the company page well, and a lot of companies are today, they're using three hashtags. One of them may be their own hashtag. Often it is. Ours is, right? Our hashtag mm -hmm. SSL insights. That's, you know, that's what people use when they're following our content. When you see those, if you look at the content that's being shared on those hashtags, 
that that'll give you an idea of what you know at least top from a topic perspective that they're checking out and they're engaging on because that's the purpose of those hashtags for them to click through and engage on those hashtags mm -hmm. so i think that's a really big deal uh the other thing is make sure that you're doing your best to engage a little bit when it comes to the content so you don't, you can listen but you can also let them know that you're there. Just get on their radar a little bit. I want to share just something around company page before we move on. Um, we can use this content to start conversations with our prospects. Let's say it's a big company. Most people in a larger company miss their own press. They miss their own content. So when you can find content about the company, maybe that the company actually shared on the, on the page. This is a great opportunity to grab that content and share it in the inbox, message someone directly that's in the company. And I could say, hey, Bob, just saw your company posted. They won an award on X, Y for X, Y, Z. Most people miss their own press. And I thought I'd get it in front of you. And so you can use those insights. I know we're talking about social listening and I kind of went down a rabbit hole. But you can use those insights, right, to start conversations too. Right, and and one of the things we we are going to talk about, you've already started the discussion, is is you know how we can use what we discover to start a conversation. So that's a, a great great way to do that. So let's kind of go a little bit more granular here. We're talking about a company. Let's talk about a specific profile page, somebody's specific profile page. How can we begin to social listen there? You want to start, Bob? Yeah, sure. So with that, it's um, it's kind of similar to, to what you do with, with the company page. You can start with their headline and really see how they view them, not only view themselves, but how they want to come off to their own audience. The next would be the about section, uh, it, just in terms of what they want others to know about them. And that's normally going to be written in their voice. So, so, you know, if they're a little more formal or a little more informal, and then just, you know, just really dig down and see what's important to them because it's likely going to be in their about section. The other area you can go to is just to see what they're posting, which you can do directly from the profile when, when you scroll down and, and, and you click on view all activity, and then you click on posts on the next page. At that point, you really know what they're talking about because they're sharing whatever it is they're they're sharing and it's and it's not the whatever it is part that's important but they are going to be sharing the things that are important to them and and again you get a feel for what type of person they are more or less in their shares as well and you can base uh future uh content you know if you want to send them content or if you want to start a conversation with them off of linkedin all of that type of of intelligence for lack of a better word and i don't like using that word but that's what it kind of is i love the word intelligence yeah it's uh <laughs> the insights that, that information gleaning. insights yeah. insights that's the word I would yeah use. but those insights <laughs> that you're gleaning help you to identify what matters to them so you can start conversations around those topics. I love that. I, I'm gonna throw in just really quickly, there's a relatively newer feature called um, cover story. And so there are a lot of people that may have included a video in their headshot. And so you can see if they did, you're gonna get some information about kind of ultimately what do they want their visitors to know. Those are good insights. and um creator mode it gives you an opportunity when you turn that on in your dashboard to choose five hashtags on how you on the things that describe you so you're choosing hashtags on the topics that you talk about so if those things are sh popping up i think those are great opportunities yeah the hashtag one's really important too i mean hashtags are so important and i think that sometimes people people think that they're just twitter and you know people don't really do a lot with them on linkedin blah 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 that's not right people do a lot with hashtags on on linkedin so if you're on the hashtag train on twitter but not on linkedin definitely get your boarding pass to get on that train as well because um a lot of people are using uh, hashtags on LinkedIn. So this information is so important that you need to hear it twice. Yeah. Right? We apologize for that. 
Here's the thing. If you're socially listening to someone on their profile, it's also going to put you on their radar, right? Because you're going to look at their profile. They're going to get a notification that you looked at their profile. It's also a great way, especially if it's one of your prospects, to begin to engage with them so that it warms that up. So you're not saying, you know, the great LinkedIn pickup line, hi, Bob, I see we have some connections in common. That doesn't work. You're able to look and see information that you can then use in a connection request to say, hey, Bob, I really appreciate that 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 uh, post you did on the hashtag tag train wagon. See, I can't even say it once. So, so that you can really relate to the person. Remember, you know, the great quote from Bob Berg from Endless Referrals is at the end of all things being equal, people do business with people they know, like, and trust. How on LinkedIn do we get to know, like, and trust? Attract, teach, and engage. This is one of the areas where we're engaging with them so that we can they can begin to get to know us and we can begin to begin begin to get to know them. See, I, I can't even yeah, say it's that. all good. A few other things I want to point out, right? So they have probably taken the time to list their skills. These are actual words and phrases that they have decided they want to be known for. This is great opportunity for listening right? Especially if you want to reach out to someone, you know, maybe they have, I'm going to, they're great at Excel, right? Okay, good. So now I reach out and say, hey, Bob, I see you're great at Excel. I'm wondering if you had any thoughts around X, Y, and Z, right? I'm just put it out there. They have determined this is their expertise. Our social listening allows us to leverage the way they see themselves. The other one is recommendations both the ones they've received and the ones they've given. So the ones they've given are really great. You get to see kind of how they work in the world, how they communicate out there and you know what they value from people. The ones they've received allow you to see who are their clients, mm -hmm. how have they helped, what, ha you know, what is the solution that they bring, really powerful insights that can really help us understand our prospect better. There's another one too that that we don't talk about as quite as much, and I tend to call them softer talking points, but uh, you could use things like um, colleges and universities that they've gone to. Like for example, I, and it just happened to me this, this morning, I was talking with a gentleman uh, who went to Michigan State University. I'm a big Ohio State fan. If, if you're into sports or even if you're not into sports, there's more conferences, you know, where we, we ended up talking about Big Ten stuff for, for uh, a couple of minutes. It's definitely not business related, but when it comes to the no like and trust mantra, if, if you can make those real personal connections, that's mm -hmm. that's just icing on the cake, mm -hmm. basically. Yeah. And you can also get those from the um, – from like volunteering and things like that too. If you share similar um, similar interests in that, like I'm a member of a fraternal organization that's nationwide, but in my church, if I see that somewhere else, I'll talk about that. In fact, I've had people bring that up with me as well. So um, mm -hmm. just a just a wealth of information that 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 you can socially listen to 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 to, to really get that trust going more. Yeah, yeah, and it could go to to past companies that that they yeah. that they work for, and this really opens up, you know, layers. Really, if you look at that, it opens up layers where you can then reach out and and go deeper. And really, what we're looking to do is we're we're looking to find a point of context with them mm -hmm. that will allow us to start a conversation, to connect with them, to start a conversation that may lead down to a sales conversation when the time is right. But we have mm -hmm. to start somewhere and we can't mm -hmm. start with, hey, Bryn, we help companies just like yours because right. that starts it and finishes it all in one shot. Yep. Exactly. So we have a question from Bruce. I know this may be a loaded question. When you meet someone at a conference, do you connect on LinkedIn, Facebook, or Instagram? I connect LinkedIn only. Facebook for me is friends and Instagram is only there because I've connected it to Clubhouse. So really it's what, where do you communicate and where do they communicate? So the, the question really, I mean, it's a great one, but it's, 
really important. You know, it's a big old, it depends essentially, but it does help you really determine what vehicle of communication that they like to, to use. Sometimes it may be text. Sometimes it may be just the phone or sometimes it's like, you know, I only email. So I believe LinkedIn is, from a business perspective is the best way to connect. Here's, oh, what yeah. you, here's what you learn. And we know this. LinkedIn has taught us that there is a 20% turnover year over year. That means one out of five of everyone you're talking to is leaving where you're talking to them, right? So mm. when you're on LinkedIn, it's it's self-updated. They get a new job, you know you now know where they are. So right. I think for me, LinkedIn is the answer. And and now with the great with the great resignation, you know, that 20% may be higher now. I, I'm I'm not sure. I just heard that term like a couple of weeks ago. But but I'll say this, you know. What is that person to you when you meet them at that conference? Are they a prospect? Are they a networking partner? Are they just someone that you've met and you like them and you want to connect with them further to explore possibilities? So it starts there and then determine, okay, then what's the best way that they want to communicate to, with, be communicated with? Because if my best way is LinkedIn, but they don't have a LinkedIn account, but then again, in our situation, if they don't have a LinkedIn account, they're probably not my ideal prospect. Right. You know, so so it's kind of that that level. And so I, I agree with you, Bryn. You know, you have to determine that and then figure out what's going to work best for you in your situation. And but you also have to take into consideration where are they going to connect and communicate with you at at what at what point. So. Yeah. So let's get back to the social listening piece. We're going to recap social listening, right? Make sure you are looking at the company pages of your prospects. Mm -hmm. Read how they talk about themselves. Read the posts. Look at who's engaging. Look at their hashtags. Look at your prospects' profiles. And by the way, most there are typically way more than one person that's your lead inside of an account. There, you know, uh, the challenger customer tells us there are 6.8 decision makers on any complex sale, enterprise sale. Uh, I'd hate to be the 0.8, but, you know, but, you know, but so, so it's not just one person. Look at all the people. You can also look at the activity of other people inside the organization that will be impacted by your solution. So there's so many things that we do, but look at their profile, read their headline, read their about section, go look at their featured section for the content they're sharing, go to their activity and see what they're posting and engage, look at their, their um, title, how they describe their job description, their uh, recommendations and their skills. Did I recap everything? I think you got it all. Boom. Woo. So this was fun guys. Yeah, this is great. great. And so catch us on our next episode of Making Sales Social Live. We'll see you then. Hit subscribe now and click the notification bell to get the latest videos from Social Sales Live. Give this video a like and comment down below. Register for free resources at LinkedInLibrary.com.